Hello. Previously on Shonen Archive, we both agreed that we could probably do another series, and it'd be Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So here we are, with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, starting with the first six episodes. Um, just to give a little bit of backstory behind it, Zen has watched Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in specifically Japanese... Um, I think you've explained it before in a previous episode. At least there was a brief time where you watched it at least once a year, fully. Yep, just a crazy amount of times. Yes. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX slams. And I have never <laughs> seen... It's so good. I have never fully seen all of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in English. One, because they never finished Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in English. And it's been actually Yeah, I can't years. really blame you for that. It's <laughs> They didn't yeah. even finish it. They did not finish it, um, which I have some notes on it, so... I will be basically kind of going in either not fully blind, but not fully understanding, especially in the Japanese version, which is very different from the English version. And Zen will be 100% knowing absolutely everything that you could imagine. He will also be the one that will correct me whenever I get the names wrong. Because <laughs> I will try my best to say it by the Japanese name, um, but I will occasionally forget just because it's been ingrained on me for years that these characters' names are something else. But before we start and actually get into the episodes, here's some notes about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in case you're jumping in and have no idea what Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is going like, yo, what's Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? Please tell us. Don't worry, I got your back. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is the follow-up to the anime Yu-Gi-Oh! Released in Japan in October 6, 2004 and went on for four more years, ending in March 26, 2008. It is the longest Yu-Gi-Oh! spinoff uh, with 180 episodes, the other spinoffs being uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Arc 5, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexels. Is that the one? That's the, I Zexel missed... came before Arc 5. Yeah, Zexels came before Arc 5. Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 and v Rans, I think, are the other two, if I'm remembering them right. Yes. Okay. I didn't write those down. 7s is the just... one that's running right now, I think. Yes, correct. Um, it is the only Yu-Gi-Oh! spinoff that did not introduce a new way to play the game. Because uh, even Sevens introduces a new, like, weird way of dueling that is not... It, the, it's so different from Yu-Gi-Oh! It may as well not be called Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. Uh, but fusion summons are kind of focused on in this one. So if you ever wonder, hey, how come they fusion a whole bunch? It's because they had to figure out something to do. <laughs> something different from regular Yu-Gi-Oh! What what's something that was never done in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Fusion summon? Alright, let's do that. Let's really lean into that. And they sure as hell do in this one. Um, the English and Japanese versions are completely different, with different names, a different score, and, a g and in general, a different flow of how episodes kind of feel, which is what I felt like while watching it, is that it just felt very different from how, like, even the English one would go. Um, it's very hard to explain unless you've seen both of them, and it would make perfect sense once you've seen both of them. Also, there's a lot more intense themes in GX, all of which were censored in the English version, because you can't do that. Yeah, GX gets... It starts really silly, and then it gets very aggressively, like, dark after a while. Unsilly. Um, and then in the... Of course, in the 4Kids version, they're like, oh, hold on, that's illegal. And so none of the themes really make it through. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, and also in the GX era, there was a whole bunch of packs specifically to the card game as well, because there's also a card game going on at the same time. Zen, can you remember any of the pack names that came out during the GX era? I'll give you at least one, which is <laughs> Cybernetic Revolution. <laughs> can you remember any of the others? Uh, one of, them, one of them just Generation Next? No, that is not one of them. Really? It's yeah. not a red pack with a thing on the front that's called okay. generation next that one is not let me say an actual main set because there was a pack where that sold like little Jaden cards afterwards i remember oh that okay one. i didn't realize that was a special thing okay um uh okay i know there's one with shining flare wingman on the front yeah, accurate. uh ele elemental justice or something elemental so close. It's not Elemental Hero. Elemental mm -hmm. Power, something like that. Elemental Energy? Yes. <laughs> you got it. Uh -huh, Elemental okay. Energy. Oh, and uh, Cyber Dark Impact. I remember that one because they made a literal card out of it. Correct. There is also one called Cyber Dark Impact. <laughs> so... Yeah, they made they took the name of the set and they made it a literal card that's called Cyber Dark Impact. They sure did. 
And let me see, the other packs in it, just to go through them real quick, are the Lost Millennium, Cybernetic Revolution, which I mentioned, Elemental Energy. Okay, wait, wait, wait. As we, as we go through them, name them, and I'm going to guess what the cover monster is. All right, so let's go back to the Lost Millennium. Who was the cover for Lost Millennium? That has got to be Ancient Gear Golem. Correct. One moment. Okay. Uh, okay, next one, Cybernetic Revolution. This one should be so easy for you, Zen. It, it's... It's either Cyber Dragon or Cyber End Dragon. 99% it's Cyber End Dragon. It is... I believe it is Cybernetic... Uh, let me look up Revolution. Show me, show me a I'm picture. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was Cyber End Dragon. I don't want to look Dragon. it up because I don't want to see the pictures. Yeah, you're so, right. But, it's, but if you send one of the, it's Cyber End. Okay. It's Cyber End Dragon, yes. That's the boss monster, so I figured that made the most yeah, sense. Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. Next, for Elemental Energy... Uh, we already talked about uh, Shining Flare Wingman. Correct. 100% on that one. Shadow of Infinity. Oh, God. Uh, um, I will be very surprised if you remember this, man. Shadow of Infinity. Probably a Season 1. Um, I'll say the a big bad of Season 1. Hamon? Is that your final guess? Well, now I think it's wrong, so no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's If it's the big bad of Season 1, it's got to be one of the Sacred Beasts. And if it's not Hamon, it sure as shit isn't Uriah, because that card sucks. So it's probably Raviel. It is Raviel. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord Gave it of away Phantasms. a little bit there. I did, but I had to give you another shot to just say it. Next one is Enemy of Justice. This one you should know. Enemy of Justice. You say this one I should know, so that leads me to think it's a hero card. Um, it's a season two, so it's probably... Or maybe it's a Destiny hero, because it's probably an Aster card. Because he was he started season two. Um, but he didn't have Plasma by that point, because he gets that later. So I'm going to say Dreadmaster? Final answer? Uh, again, that makes me think it's wrong. <laughs> I'm just asking if you feel like that's the final answer. Um, I'll go with it. I'll always ask it. Regardless. Yeah, Even if yeah, you're right, I'll I will say, ask I, it. Well, he has another boss monster in that first duel, but that boss monster he never uses again, so I don't know. I, the original one that he uses is um, Shining Phoenix Enforcer, but he only uses it in one duel. So I'm going to yeah. say Dreadmaster. <laughs> And guess who was on the one pack? Shining Phoenix Enforcer was your Are you pack. serious? It was Shining yeah. Phoenix Enforcer? Shining Phoenix Enforcer was the cover band for that, which maybe shows you... By the way, this era, I think a lot of people will say the GX era was a little bit rough <laughs> for some of the packs. Maybe some of it is because your main focus was Shining Phoenix Enforcer. As you said, it's a card that Aster only uses once. Yeah, he, he only uses it in one, one duel, and then he doesn't... Dreadmaster is his ace until he gets um, better cards. Plasma. That's very weird. That is weird. Next, we have uh, Power of the Duelist. Power of the... Well, that, damn, could that be any more generic? Um, something Neos. Neos something. I don't think it's regular Neos because Neos himself has never been on a card pack. Um, what's the one that Jaden uses the most? I'm going to say Flare Neos. Flare Neos. Okay. Um, it was Dark Neos, it turns out. Dark Neos? Dark Neos. The, the one cat, with the, the panther? panther one? Yeah. The that, one who okay, that the one's panther. got awful. So. Terrible. Yeah, okay. Uh, Fair enough. Cyberdark Cyber Impact you already have. C Cyber Dark Dragon. <laughs> Just to be sure on if this one. If it's not I'm... that, I'll be blown away. Uh, it's going to be really funny when it turns out it's the other one. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. You might be wrong. And actually, no, you're right. You're right. It is. Cyber yeah, there's Dark no Dragon. way it's not Cyber Dark Dragon. It had, that's the, if Cyber End Dragon was the other one, it's got to be I, Cyber Dark Dragon. I thought Dragon. it might have been one of the little ones, but now it's Cyber Dark Dragon. <laughs> Strike of Neos. Who's on the cover of Strike of Neos? I know this one because of all of the memes. Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> trivia about how this card is gone. It's Air Neos. It's 100% Air Neos, a card that has never <laughs> returned and will never return. It's gone forever for the life of us. Next, you, if you guess this one, I'll be fucking surprised. Force of the Breaker? 
Force of the Breaker. Uh, okay, so if you would, if it helps, we're do you probably want me to mention some of the cards inside of it. Uh, I don't think it would help. Um, I'm trying to think of where we are season wise. Because uh, technically we haven't gotten through season th- two yet, because we don't have one of. But maybe Sartorius's monster just didn't get one. Um, Arcana Force something, Arcana Force the world. No, oh, it is. Uh, <laughs> you're never gonna get it. Volcanic Doom Fire. Yeah, no, I wasn't gonna get that, you but that does tell me it. that it's season. Yeah, the Axel. That's a very weird character to have. <laughs> yeah, that's what okay. I was like. Uh, <laughs> if you remember the volcanics, because you'd have to do something that not even Konami does, because they also don't remember the volcanics. Yeah, I mean, I do know that they're, they're Axel's uh, cards, so now I know we're in Season 3. But yes. at the now, same time, there's no way I was going to get that. That's the first one no. from Season 3. This one I think you're going to get. Tactical Evolution. Tactical Evolution. We're in Season 3. Tactical evolution. That kind of sounds like a Neos thing. Um, but also, we're in season three, and I know that one of the packs has Rainbow Dragon on it. Um, but he, Rainbow Dragon doesn't come in until close to the end of season three. I'm going to say Rainbow Dragon. You're right. It's 100% Rainbow Dragon. Aha! This is also, okay, I think, so the... that's the first half of season three. This is also the first time... I forget, is this where they introduced the Rainbow Rare? I don't remember if there was a Rainbow Rare in this one. which was I know Dragon. there's a Ghost Rare of Rainbow Dragon. I must be thinking of another pack then. My bad. I thought that he also introduced the same time as the... No, yeah, the Ghost Rare. This is also the introduction of the Ghost Rare. With Ghost Rare Rainbow Dragon, if you were so lucky enough to get... And next pack, Gladiator's Assault. I would be surprised if you got this guy, because I honestly forgot that he was the cover guy. Gladiator's Assault sounds like a Gladiator Beast is the only thing that comes to mind, and those are not cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, to my memory. So... I don't know, because I, I'm pretty sure the cover cards are all anime character cards. Like, I, I don't say, think a Gladiator Beast is I'll say right Beast now, the... it is an anime card. That's why it's I an was anime saying, card. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was saying, like, Telling me the character that uses it would probably give it away. Um, I might even have to... I, I, I actually don't remember this man's name, so I might actually actually show you him so you can tell me because I can't find him <laughs> on the pack list. Uh, yeah, I, I'll just say I don't know because I the only thing I can think of is Gladiator Beast, so I'll take the loss on this one. Okay. And you can show me his picture. I'll show you the picture if you can guess it from this blurry pic. Uh... It looks like a Neos card to me. Oh, that's uh, Chaos Neos. All right, then. There you go. Chaos Neos was the main guy for Gladiator's Assault. Again, you would never guess it because based off of this, it should be a Gladiator Beast because that was the dude every- that's the dudes everyone was using. <laughs> and next, Phantom Darkness, which is the... Uh, think- we're Season 3. I don't know which form of this it would be, but that's got to be Yubel. Yes, it is Yubel. It is Yubel with a bunch of snakes on it. You the, the ultimate nightmare. There you go. Not the the woman, the the other one. <laughs> Next pack, light of destruction, and this is, I believe, the final pack. Light of destruction. Now, see, that sounds like Sartorius, who I'm going to tell you right now. Oh no, no, wait! There's a whole plot line in season four about light, and there's this kid. And he, he's not actually a kid. He's actually the Yu-Gi-Oh card Honest. Holy shit. For some I fucking can't reason. you got that. Well, is it Honest? It is Honest. There, there's a whole thing in season four where uh, there's this guy and like something seems off about him. And it's actually Honest. The dual spirit for the card Honest, like pretending to be him. That, that's and that's crazy. like his whole thing. I've so never... that, yeah. Again, because we never got um, because we never got um, season four over in the English dub, I had no idea why Honest was on the cover of Light of Destruction, other than he was a well. Also, Light gave. of Destruction is a plot point in GX. It's like a plot element. Yeah. Um, yes, it's like a it's a big deal. It's 
it so Judah, I, ha- I can't explain it too much, but it's a space monster, basically. Okay. In, in GX, light is bad and darkness is good. All right, that makes sense. And of course, the next yeah. one is Duelist Genesis, which is the start of 5Ds, which is out of our area of expertise. I I'm going to guess Stardust Dragon is on that because it's the first 5Ds one. So the shocker. The, the last, this is the final bit of trivia here because I really liked uh, the, <laughs> the trivia of it. The last pack before GX was a Sacred Phoenix of Nephis pack. Um, can you guess what is the best card released in the Sacred of Nephis pack? In the card that the would Nephthys s- pack? Yes. In, let me see if I can find the exact name so that would be helpful for you. It is called um, Flaming Eternity. What is the best card that is still used today that is used from Flaming Eternity? This pack that came out in 2005. Uh, well, it's not Nephthys. I know that shit. Um, no, it sure as fuck is not Nephthys. <laughs> no, it sure no matter, as fuck is not Nephthys. No um, how hard ne- Rhyme tries, he cannot do that. I... I am never going to get this because I don't remember the individual cards that released in individual sets. Was this a GX set? It was not. It was the one before GX. Right before GX. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it is, uh, oh, fuck. I have no idea. It is the two cards. One that is actually legitimately still played is Rescue Cat. Oh, I play Rescue Cat in mm-hmm. Master Tool. Yeah, there you go. Rescue Cat still used today. Still fantastic. Had to errata. It was too good. <laughs> And the other is actually a counter that recently popped up in Japan, which is Deck Devastation Virus, which is actually used to counter splites. <laughs> because they became such a problem, people started side decking in Deck Devastation Virus in case they ran into one, and they usually do. Because <laughs> it's like That's 80. extremely funny to me for some reason. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now for the last pack, which is the Light of uh, Light of Judgment. Um, what is the best the best card that came from that was Judgment Dragon. Can you tell us what is the best card that holds up from that pack that was released that is still used today or would be used today? So not Judgment Dragon. Um, I will say or could be used today, but is banned just because there, there's the card in here is banned because it was too good. Oh, it's a banned card. Um yeah. Honest, I think, is legal. Is that the same pack? Yep. Honest is the same pack. Yeah, I don't I don't think Honest is banned anymore. Was it ever? Or just limited? It was limited. It was remember. hardcore limited back in the day. Yeah, but I, but I don't think it was ever banned. Um, I have no idea. Substitute. Substitute was released in this pack. Fucking good. Good. Yep. Fuck Toads. And it's Get still out of banned. Here. You actually can't. Get them out of it's here. It's even more banned now because Toads are meta again. <laughs> Super banned. Never getting, getting off of that damn banned list ever. <laughs> so there's some trivia for you. Let's get into the actual Yu-Gi-Oh! GX thing. Zen, start us off with episode one, Yugi's Air. Uh, so the episode begins with Judai running along the street. And he's running late because there was a train accident. And he's trying to get to his uh, like entrance duel. He's trying to earn his entrance into Duel Academy through the testing. And he bumps into a totally mysterious person whose face is not shown and definitely isn't Yugi. Um, can't be who Yugi. gives him the winged Karibo card. Which he then adds to his deck, and that's a really funny scene in that episode, because Yugi pops his deck box open like it's a gun holster. <laughs> uh, and then he pulls out Wink Karibo and gives it to him. Uh, and Judai is rushing to the stadium to because the, the entrance exam takes place at the Kaiba Land theme park. Shout out to Kaiba Land from back in the original. <laughs> you back in the original um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. And then he makes it there, and Kronos de Medici, a.k.a. Crowler, for you people who grew up on the dub, uh, is super offended that Judai was late, even though he wasn't really that late. He actually made it before it ended, but he said that it was too. The behavior was too lax, um, and so he wanted to duel him himself for his entrance duel to like humiliate him um, with his with his legendary rare deck, which is the Ancient Gears, and he duels against Jaden, and Jaden wins using Flame Wingman, and it's like this big scandal at the moment where everyone's blown away that uh, Crowler used his personal deck and lost. And then uh, the episode ends with him getting admitted to 
Duel Academy. Yeah, and that's uh, episode one. Very easy episode to talk about. So let's start at the beginning. This OP, which I described here as Tony Hawk like OP, because <laughs> it is yeah, Japanese. Yeah, so uh, the Japanese version of it, um, the name is Hallelujah. It yeah, we- is extremely different from Get Your Game On, but it's the closest opening of GX that has like kind of similar energy. Yes. Because they get progressively more serious and like sad boy as uh, as it goes on. But Hallelujah kind of has get your game on ish energy. Hallelujah. Fantastic. Hopefully I'll be able to use it in the actual thing because I actually think it's a fantastic in terms of energetic. I'm someone who really likes the energetic uh, Yu-Gi-Oh themes, which is why I also usually end up liking the English themes because they usually have a huge energy to them. Even as the series gets progressively darker, that OP never changes. <laughs> it always stays the same level of like, even when shit was going bad for Yu-Gi, that shit still started off with the boom, 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 like the, <laughs> the, the EDM OP. So I appreciated the kind of uh, jaunty kind of opening of it. And like I said, it does it did remind me of a Tony Hawk. I actually felt like I could legitimately put it into like mod it into a Tony Hawk game. and It would fit perfectly. Just as it just has that kind of energy. It, it does kind of have that, that sort of vibe. Yeah, uh, it's really good. All of the OPs, I think, for GX are good. Season two's opening and ending are kind of eh, but uh, it's mostly the ending that's not that good. 99% is kind of rough, but. The original opening and ending for GX are very good. I like them quite a bit. Some other things you mentioned, I did like the... When he busts out that Karibo, I never... When you bring it up like that, he does kind of bust it out like a gun. I also like that it only... So here's the thing. They really kind of wrote themselves into a problem with the ending of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because everyone loves the Pharaoh. Everyone loves the Teb. Problem is, he can never show up again. <laughs> he can never, yes. unless you do. So they decided that adult Yugi just fucking looks exactly like him. <laughs> yes, but he looks slightly different that it's not 100% just a Tem. Like, there's something in the way he looks where I'm like, that doesn't look like a Tem. That just like he looks like Yugi, but older. It's really weird. Yeah, because... aged up Yugi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did like seeing him there. I also really like the idea of like, oh yeah, let me, which is a shame that they never do it ever again, because starting from this point on, like every GX uh, series doesn't kind of have the same universe. It does. 5Ds kind of takes place in the same universe, but it takes place so far in the future. You can't have like um, Judai show up and be like, hey man, your turn to duel now, like they do it here. So I kind of like the kind of passing of the torch in that uh, essence right there. And plus he gives him a Karibo. Yeah, where you can actually sort of have some character. Like Kaiba appears in this multiple times as well. Yeah, because you can actually do something with Kaiba because he's still there. I really like that part of it. But um, I also really like Karibo. I like that he makes a completely different sound in Japanese than he does in uh, the English dub. Because in the English dub he goes, hmm, like he does the Karibo noise. But he does like kuri kuri in the Japanese yeah, version. Yeah, he, he in the Japanese version he has like Pokemon speak. Yeah. Yeah. And for some just... reason in the English version he just goes like, ah, <laughs> it's like not a, oh, not a. <laughs> you could have just left the Japanese Pokemon. So you didn't have to change it. They yeah anything they just kind of just made him sound like uh, uh, Mr. Burns when he's high up on all those drugs when he pretends to be. <laughs> he kind of sounds like that. <laughs> like when he gets startled like. Ah! kind of sounds like that in, in uh, america um other things i real i noticed uh cyrus is struggling against a really shitty card <laughs> yeah he gets hit by a uh, legume or whatever the thing is legume, called legume who i think is he's 350 attack and just attacks directly <laughs> but when you look yeah. at uh, and the, the only thing that you see is sho getting hit by that yes that's his sho. japanese name sho yeah. marufuji i will now try and say sho sho gets hit by it i thought it was really funny i completely forgot like just to establish how low on the total pull he is he's struggling against this really really bad card um bastion who is called daichi Wain... daichi daichi misawa daichi okay okay daichi uh daichi gets to use the japanese art for ring of destruction which I forgot looks fucking rough because that's the one. If you don't know, it's just grenades. Grenades, <laughs> yes, a, a, a circle of grenades around the neck. Yeah, in the English version, it's like fire, right? Yes, it is fire. They censor it by making it just fire. 
Um, it can cr- completely threw me for a loop that Crowler is supposed to be Italian. Because I had never yes. picked up those vibes <laughs> that he was supposed to be an Italian man. And in here, he's... Yeah, he, he, in the English version, he's almost just like a, can be like a doofy idiot. Like, not anything. Yeah. Uh, in the Japanese version, he's supposed to look like someone who's trying to be like a suave Italian person, and it's not working. He has like a very specific way of speaking, which reminded me of this old, uh, I think it's Scandinavian character called Radafak Blachka. And it completely fucked me up because I was like, oh my god, he sounds exactly like this character except for he's speaking Japanese. <laughs> I had to look it up to see, like, does this guy does any other voice but um, Kronos? And no, he doesn't. He just does him. Um, so he keeps throwing out these Italian words like, and oh, he's like, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, he has really a really cute. great, uh, oh, Dio in the beginning because oh, Dio oh, is God in Italian. Yes, he also says uh, at one point, "Mamma Mia," <laughs> which yeah, is... he said he says "Mamma Mia" a lot. He does, and I think I put down here in my notes, "Mamma Mia," that's a spicy meatball. Kronos is getting attacked <laughs> by Flame Wing Man. <laughs> He's like two seconds away <laughs> from just dropping that. Um, I don't remember if they censored this, but when Ancient Gear Golem shows up to punch Avion, he completely rocks the shit out of Avion. <laughs> Like, that fist yes. goes crazy against him. Um, the other thing I realized, uh, like I said, we're using the Japanese art, and every single time I see Percent of Tricks, I write down the word damn, because holy shit, did someone have to? Yes, they uh, had to edit that every single fucking time. It's yes, crazy. So- someone had to be on the boob duty to get that, because that you don't realize it, because they do, I guess, such a fantastic job of censoring her, that she doesn't look that crazy uh, busty, but then when you look at her in the Japanese art, it's crazy how much they had to censor. Yes. Also, it's really funny, in the uh, Japanese version, that her name is not Persinatrix, it's Burst Lady. And for some reason, they changed that. Yes. They didn't change Avion, Clayman, Sparkman, or Bubble Man. But Burst Lady lady is not allowed. It has to be Burstinatrix. Burstinatrix. Which is funny because it's obviously the combination of Burst and Dominatrix. And um, I was looking it up and I was like, why would they do this? Apparently Dominatrix is the female way of saying in Latin, Dominator, which means Lord. The problem is, is that nowadays that's not what people take Dominatrix to It's not what it means, be. yeah. No. <laughs> At no point does anyone think that that's what that means anymore. So I'm going to assume it was some guy... He did that and he's saying, like, this would be a very cool, like, reference to what it is, you know, Latin stuff like that. Kids will never pick up on it. And at no point, no one in the censorship office said, you know what a dominatrix is, right, Phil? No one had that conversation <laughs> with Phil. And they just let this through. <laughs> and they were perfectly okay with the name Domin- Brisinatrix. <laughs> and Yeah, and it's so, like, what? Why would you just change lady? What's wrong with burst lady? Yeah, it. I guess. I yeah. I don't know. There, it was it's some very weird choices coming from them. But yeah, it was a very good like introduction episode. Kind of just show you Judai. I kind of appreciate that the way that they show Judai is different. Is that from both Yagi and Atem? Like when Atem is in a hard battle, he'll kind of be like, ah. Like, what am I going to do? What's next? And Jaden's real thought is like he's just kind of like living in the moment. He's kind of going like, all right. This is pretty good. This is pretty fun. Let's go. Yeah, Jaden's big thing is like um, it's similar to the heart of the cards, the thing that Atem does, where he's like, I'm going to trust my cards, but Judai puts it up more to like uh, if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. And like it's less magical and more like faith based. Like, I I trust my deck kind of thing. I live in the 1%, says yes, (laughs) Judai. So yeah, I thought it was a very good like introduction. Kind of gets you in the groove of things. It is still 2000 style anime art, so it might put off a couple people, but I still think it did perfectly fine. I also started to realize that the music that they use, I feel like I've heard it like everywhere, but now I don't know where I heard it from. Do you know what I mean? I feel like someone I've been watching has been using the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX music, and I've never noticed it was from Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! GX until I actually watched it. Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, if I ever figure it out, I'll let you know, but there's something about the music specifically 
where it's like because in the English version it's more rocking it's more of a rocking yeah the English version plays up that like these are some radical dudes yeah with yeah with very different characters it was very different hearing like Judai not say get your game on I'm throwing a face down here's my favorite guy elemental hero avion in defense mode there's like specific like catchphrases that he says in the english version that this one doesn't say like game on or that's game like there's very specific things that he says that are not being saved by this one and it's actually kind of throwing me for a loop because he'll do the actions and i'm like (laughs) this is the part where he says get your game on but he doesn't say that and it's funny too because uh he has a bunch of catchphrases in the japanese version that don't make it to the english version for some fucking reason yeah, like, what is the final thing he says when he puts down... Usually in the English version, that's what he says, that's game, but what does he say in... Uh, in the Japanese version is gotcha. Gotcha, so there you go. <laughs> that's a big difference, so I'm still trying to get used to that, but, you know, good starting introduction, I'd say. How you feel about it? You've seen uh, it yeah, so I think times. it's a great pilot episode. Um, I really like that they brought Yugi in for it, because it, it does feel like... I mean... It's literally a passing of the torch because he shows up and hands Jaden a Karibo mm-hmm. with Karibo being like the secondary like mascot character after Dark Magician and Yugi's deck. Um, Summon Skull Tim feels his heart as he <laughs> fades away <laughs> from that realization. Um, hey, in the fucking filler arcs when they had like deck <laughs> masters and stuff, Karibo was Yugi's for a long time. No, you're right. It is um, Karibo. You're 100% it's correct. totally Karibo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it does a good job setting up Judai's character, where he's just like, "I'm good and dueling slams." Yeah, like that's his whole thing for a while. That's all he's here. I'm here for good vibes and good duels. Let's go, bro. Um, the uh, Bastion also has a very good line when he's like quizzing him. He's like, because he says like he uh, show basically tells him like, "Oh yeah, he's the number one." And then when he shows up, you know, you're pretty good for the number two duelist. And he kind of goes like who's number one he's like me <laughs> yeah me <laughs> he just walks off mm. and then his immediate response isn't to be like angry it's to be like hmm so this is number one huh let me look at this duel then <laughs> which is yeah i like um daichi he he gets done very dirty later on in the story <laughs> based on um, what happens to bastion i'll say yes <laughs> Based yeah. on what I remember. That's pretty much the end of it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you've seen it in English, so you know that like he he becomes irrelevant basically. Um, but in the beginning, and he's he becomes kind of so right. irrelevant. Well, in the beginning, he's like one of you know what he is. He's Ida in My Hero Academia. That's what he is. He is. He, he's, Holy shit! You're right. Yeah, he's like vaguely important for a while, and they kind of play it up like he's one of the boys, like between Manjome, Judai, and like Daichi. That that that's like the big three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Daichi becomes so irrelevant that it becomes a running joke at how fucking irrelevant that he actually is. Um, there's a point, you know, like the in season two when the, like the cult shows up and there's like the cult of light that that brainwashes people. Mm-hmm. Daichi loses to that cult on purpose to to be like fit in and like have people that pay attention to him, and none of them still do. Damn, that's rough. Yeah, it's <laughs> real mm-hmm. rough going for him eventually. It's, it's bad. Yeah, it's real bad. Well, here at the beginning, at least, he's doing perfectly okay-ish, at least. he's he's He was actually good enough for me to remember all the hatred I had for, I uh, guess, Bastion and the jokes that we've made about him to kind of go like, oh, actually, he's this is a fairly good introduction to him, too, actually. Kind of like what mm-hmm. they were going with him. And they also do show uh, Majome in the background as well as uh, Asuka and what do they call Zane in here? Is it still Zane? Zane is uh, Rio. But mostly Rio. they call him Kaiser. It's his nickname. Kaiser. Kaiser Rio. It'll be easier to remember. So, a good introduction for it. So, let's move on to episode two called Flame Wingman. Very easy episode names to remember <laughs> compared to Gin. Yeah, it's usually just the big monster that, that is used in the duels. Mm hmm. So, go ahead and tell us. Uh, so, Chaz a.k.a. Manjome, has a bit of a chip on his shoulder um, about Judai beating Kronos, and so he's, like, trying to challenge him to a duel because he wants to show him up. Um, He ends up challenging him to, like, a knight duel, like a secret anti-duel, where the loser has to give up their best card, 
Um, Judai goes after bumping into Asuka earlier, who then ends up coming out. I don't remember why she's there during the secret night duel. I think she shows up I think... because she wants to show up. But, like, I don't remember why she knows it's even happening. Yeah, I wouldn't know either. I think very similar to... I think she just kind of... I think they imply that... I think it's implied in a later episode. She kind of just wanders the school at night looking for her brother. Because, remember, oh, she also... Oh, that's right, she does. Yeah, she just looks for, uh, for her brother, her missing brother. Yeah, that's what I assume is the reason why she keeps showing up at random places at night. Because, yeah, that... she does just, like, pop up in the middle of this night duel. Uh-huh. But uh, they they have their duel. Chaz uh, plays like a counter strategy to Flame Wingman. Um, and it's funny when he does, because when Flame Wingman goes to his side, he has like an evil mouth with fangs in it. Yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, and then when Judai gets him back, the evil mouth goes away and he just looks like normal Flame Wingman again. Um, and then it's they're forced to end early because the, the school like security is wandering around. Um, and then it's revealed that Jaden top decked Monster Reborn and would have won, even though everyone thought he lost. Like Chaz thought he had no way to win, so he basically called himself the winner and left. Uh, but it was revealed only to Jaden, Sho, and Asuka that Jaden actually would have won. Mm-hmm. And that's where it ends. This is where his, um, this is where the great line of his of "I live in the one percent" comes from. <laughs> Because he says that, because Manjami basically says, there's a 99% chance that you lose in here. There's no way you beat this. The game is mostly luck, but if you're skillful, you can easily beat someone, even if they get lucky. And he says, like, whatever, I live in the 1%, bitch. And then he was about to draw Monster Reborn and win. And then that's when they they kind of all get shut down. Um, I really like that at the beginning here... They kind of establish a little bit of the place. This is where you learn about how it breaks down because there is uh, Osiris Red, there is Raw Yellow, and then there's Obelisk Blue. And uh, basically, if you're in uh, Raw Yellow, I think who breaks it down? Chumley. I don't remember his Japanese name for Chumley. Unfortunately, Chumley's too good uh, of a name for me to remember. His yeah, I name. don't actually remember either because Chumley's too irrelevant of a character. What do you mean? I think you mean uh, Chumley's too fuck. good of a name. Chumley. <laughs> Hayato is his Japanese name. It's Hayato. Hayato. <laughs> okay. Hayato kind of tells him, like, you're you're putting too much effort into things. Like, I don't think you understand that we're basically at the bottom of the bottom here. And shit sucks. And that's when they reveal, like, um, we're going to get ready for our introduction um, feast, basically, to welcome everyone. And when they do that, they show Obelisk Blue, which is having a big banquet. They have uh, the girl side of Obelisk Blue having a huge banquet. They show Raw Yellow having perfectly adequate size banquet, fun for all. Cypher Red gets some rice and some and some fish. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Absolutely. of course, Judai takes it in stride. He's all about it. He likes the food. Yes, I think they also try and say this is also where they show Pharaoh. And they try and say like our like the person in charge of our dorm isn't even human. It's a cat. <laughs> like they think that's how bad things are for them. It's like we don't even have a representative. It's a damn yeah. cat. Yeah. Oh yeah, because Pharaoh is there at first yeah. before the principal comes in. Yeah. Then the principal comes in, and then this is the reveal where his Japanese <laughs> voice, like in in the English dub, he has kind of like a vaguely Asian accent. Um. Like yeah, he, he has like a he. Uh, I guess Jayden. because he's drawn with like the the squinty eyes, they're like we have yeah. to make him Asian because yes. we're four kids. Exactly, but in here they give him a fucking like nyan. Like every at the end of it, he's like yeah, he's very like uh, his, a lot of characters oh, in nyan. GX have like vocal tics, oh, and I'm pretty sure nyan. his is nyan. Yeah, is nyan. It ends everything in yawn, and it fucking kills me every time I look at him and he goes nyan. Uh, is very funny. I guess that's a good interaction of like the difference between finding out his actual Japanese version and finding out his English version. It's like I guess this guy the entire time was making cat and yawn noises at the end. Never knew it. This is also the beginning of where um they start saying drop out boy a whole bunch. Drop out yes. boy. So I don't know if you listen, but there's a lot of uh like quote unquote English in GX, even when it's not like card names obviously with card names they do it because they've always done that mm-hmm. right like uh 
They've always Hell said soldier. the card names. Yeah. But uh they they do it a lot at random. Like when Chaz tells his little dudes to stop heckling Jaden, he says it in English. Hey yo stop. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he, he says something like stop it guys, but he says it in like the Stop it guys kind of like but it's English a hundred percent. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> The Dropout Boy is another one where they're just dropping this out. And it made me go like, is there just no Japanese equivalent to what a Dropout Boy is? <laughs> but they don't have a, a name for it. But I think it's more of a, now that you mentioned that, I think it might be a stylistic choice of where everyone just saying Dropout Boy, which is great. Yeah, they just like sometimes say shit in English. Yeah, which is pretty good. Uh, while they're showing the duel, uh, when it's Asuka and Sho, they originally show Sho. And this is the realization that show only goes up to about Asuka's chest level. Because there's a huge shot of, like, show just looking there and then nothing of her face because they can't show it yet. Because they have to keep the, fo- the the camera focused on show. And it isn't until she starts speaking does the camera actually look up to be like, oh, yeah, this is the rest of her, by the mm-hmm. way. But it was a very long <laughs> shot of that. I really like the fact that Chthonian Soldier's real name is actually Hell Soldier. I never realized that. I was it's from... super funny also. Yeah, his name is Hell Soldier, and his attack name is Hell Slash. And the subtitles edit the name to Chthonian Soldier, but they leave Hell Slash. So yep. they, they censor the name Hell Soldier, but then his attack name is Hell Slash, and they're like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to assume it's because they they had a thing from Konami said, keep the card names. That's why they still call yeah, it. Yeah, that's um, most likely that's what it is. Because GX does it, and I don't really like it, but I guess it makes sense because Konami wants to market it either way. Yeah. Um, everything that has the four kids translation other than the character names is is kept. So basically every card name that is edited in English is the subtitles yeah. still read them in English, even though obviously that's not what the characters are saying. It's like the stand names in JoJo, where the yeah. subtitles say, like, Zipper Man, but he's obviously screaming sticky fingers. Yes. It's like that. And it's very weird. Like, it's distracting. I don't really like that they do that, but it is what it is. Yeah. Nothing you can do on that one. Um, I also like that uh, this is another win by him just top decking, which I feel like that's has been his number one MMO so far is that Judai has just top deck a win every single time. Also, when they're leaving, there's like a uh, photo of a wiggly snake that I have no idea what's up with that. And I was mean to ask. Yeah, people, the wiggly snake on the statue. Yeah. Do you know what that's supposed to be other than just the wiggly snake? I have snake? no idea. It's just a wiggly snake on the statue. Okay. If you have any idea what the wiggly snake could potentially be, please tell us. Because it, it's been, I've been looking at that wiggly snake going like, is this supposed to be a monster? What is this supposed to be? But I, I don't it's know. Just, it's just a little wiggly snake. Yeah, I think it might is just as easily be a little wiggly snake. So perfectly fine episode two. Kind of introducing more of what Judai is and I guess some other back stuff like the constant Asuka just showing up randomly and <laughs> being there for her duels. But we will learn later on that it's not actually random is that she's looking for her bro and night. Yeah. But yeah, episode two is good. I like uh, that because a, a thing in the original Yu-Gi-Oh for a while would just be like, oh, Kaiba's dueling someone. Oh, he played Blue Eyes. He's going to win, right? I like that uh, they counter Judai's ace so quickly that he can't just like, oh, I played Flame Wingman. It's time for my victory lap. Like they very quickly establish that he has to do other things. Uh, so it stops him from being kind of one note as a as a duelist. He he wins a lot of his duels in the early chapters or uh, chapters early episodes with uh, different strategies. Um, I like Manjome in general. I think he's a really good character. I I just like him. He's fucking funny as hell, even when he's being a dick. He has like the Kaiba syndrome a little bit. Where, um, like, he's saying something so funny that you can't help but kind of like him, even though he what he's even though he's, yeah. he's an asshole. Yeah, it's like the it's the same thing as like Kaiba Dio. Um, I had another character off the top of my head who was like this that I was thinking about the other day, and I can't remember who it is now. Um, but yeah, it's like it's like that special kind of asshole energy where like they fucking suck, but they suck so transparently that it's so funny that like you like them anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Manjome has that in Spades. And he does the Manjome Sanda for the first time in this episode. Um, yeah, they, they haven't made the actual joke yet, but he does say it. That, that's where the beginning of the joke comes from. 
Yeah, because that's um, why I was like, did he just say Monjomi Thunder? But no, he's saying Sunda, not Thunder. Yeah, like Sanda. But um, because he he basically he's yelling at them to use the honorific after his name because Judai doesn't. Uh, mm. Judai doesn't. I don't think he uses Mon- he does, Judai doesn't use honorifics at all. So that I I think I'm pretty sure he doesn't use any. No, I don't for think anyone. he does anything. Um, and so uh, Manjoma yells at him to use it, but it keeps sounding like thunder. So people just start thinking that's his nickname, and eventually he just starts rolling with it and adopts it as his official nickname. It's great. Um, Manjome probably goes through the most character development of any character in GX, except for maybe Judai. Um, kind of goes through it, even though. Un- mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was gonna say he goes through it a little bit in these six episodes as we get to closer to episode four, <laughs> as his entire yeah. world view gets um, crashed. Yeah, he kind of like goes through. A whole bunch of different shit, and unfortunately, he falls out of the spotlight after a while. Um, but he he is really good. I really enjoy everything Manjome, basically. Okay. And let's go on to episode three called Itoi Cyber. Another featuring another a clash of the censored cards, as all of Asuka's cards have also been censored. Yes. <laughs> So you get to see them here in their uncensored glory. Yeah, this one's weird. This is the weird one. This is a, a like really transparently weird one. Um, the leaps of where, logics are astounding. Yeah, it's well. Oh, I haven't actually brought this up yet. I, I guess I was waiting for the end, but I kind of want to bring it up because it's really relevant in this episode. Um, I really like how. GX just sort of embraces this how silly the concept of the Yu-Gi-Oh world is in its entirety. Like, you know, there's a lot of uh, early Yu-Gi-Oh where like it, it tries to play like completely straight, and for the most part, GX plays it straight too. Like, it's not super self-deprecating or anything, but like it just fully leans into it. Like the the monster attacks that are all holograms, like they're all screaming and like pain. And then sometimes the monster attacks will affect the real world for no reason other than like comedy. Like when, when, uh, in the very first duel, when Ancient Gear Golem, um, breaks down mm-hmm. and it hits Crowler and like falls on his head and it, he reacts like he gets hit by a rock, but it's obviously a hologram. And then in this episode, too, when Judai uses his new hero, um, Thunder Giant, and it electrocutes Crowler somehow, <laughs> even though it can't. Even though it makes no sense for it to be able to. And there's a really good joke about this later, um, when Judai duels Rio for the first time, when he duels against Kaiser slash Zane for the first time. Um, he attacks, and Kaiser gets hit and doesn't react because it's not real, and Judai calls him out on not reacting. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, are you too good for? Are you too cool for it? Too cool for school. Can't be it's reacting. It's fucking funny. It's pretty good. And then there's oh, another funny moment that that leans into the insanity of the Yu-Gi-Oh universe. Um, in another episode, that I'll t- I'll wait for that one to talk about that one because that shit's fucking funny. But this one is super weird because Kronos, aka Crowler, puts a love letter in uh show's locker thinking that it's Judai's locker because Judai is using it. Uh, and it's from Alexis because he wants to get Judai to go to the girl's dorm and get caught and get expelled for trespassing on the girl's dorm. Uh, Judai goes to rescue Sho from accidentally getting caught and expelled. And Asuka agrees to not tell on them if uh, they duel. So they duel in rowboats. And she also plays like a, a deck sort of like his. It's very fusion-centric with, like, dinky little normal monsters that become pretty strong fusion monsters. Judai busts out the Thunder Giant for the first time, so it's the first time he doesn't just rely on Flame Wingman. Uh, but it's it's a weird episode. It's it's kind of funky that there's just, like, this grown man stalking these children. 
Yeah, and he's doing. Pretty sure little... he kisses the letter too before he puts it in. Yes, which doesn't help. The, this entire episode, no. I think, it does not help against the Kronos accusations that are coming in the future. Because he really, <laughs> yeah, Kronos never really, going to beat the accusations. <laughs> never going to beat the accusations, Vessel. This episode, because not only his his major plan also dictates the fact that he has to be there near the bathing area. And in the bathing area, they do the typical, like, oh my god, just soaping it up, boobs so huge. Which I assume is what actual Japanese women love to talk about. And also real women, because if you're a woman, feel free to tell us about it. <laughs> if you got any, <laughs> if you also spend your time in the bathroom. It's not like dudes are ever in the bathroom together saying, like, yo, dude, <laughs> nice penis size going on. It's not really something <laughs> we do. No, I can't say that it is. No. Um... They usually go like, hey, and then they kind of just awkwardly go there. Unless they're friends, in which case they kind of just go like, oh, okay. Let's kind of just talk a little bit. And I assume women also do the same thing where they just talk and they don't actually talk about. Yeah, how much I don't think that's actually grow. what they. Yeah. Well, it's I don't know. Weird. Maybe. I don't know. Again, we don't know. So it's... if you're a lady and if you talk to your yeah. lady friends about their boobs, feel free to talk into the channel. It's a safe place <laughs> for you. Know that I love and respect you <laughs> and would love to hear your experience. And let's go into the episode. What are we talking about here, Zed? I forgot what we're doing. Uh, just, it's, yeah, it's he's dueling Asuka, and Crowley yes. is being weird. Uh, my favorite thing is that Asuka says Monster Cardo when she's explaining all the different, like, like they're having an actual class. And she just says Monster Cardo, and I was like, oh, just like you, the, like the thing. <laughs> Draw Monster Cardo. Immediately came into <laughs> like my head. Like the meme, even though it's just like, of course, that's what she's going to say. Yeah, because she's just saying monster card. That's how they say monster card. Um, yeah, this is a very weird episode. Show, I feel like for how into it, the idea that he was willing. There's a lot of leaps and logics here because first of all, Kronos, his grand plan does not go into the fact that he's about to get hurt by this, and his plan immediately backfires on him. Like, from the jump go. Because even if Judai was there, he wouldn't have been able to take the picture because they realize he's there. So there would have been a lot of, like, <laughs> issues afterwards. And chances are if Sh if Judai had showed up and not show, um, he would have still dueled her. And then he would have still gone off free. Also, there's no given a chance that he would have actually gone. I'll say that right now. He doesn't really seem like the kind of guy who would just kind of be like, oh. I think he would just kind of go, okay, cool, and then just kind of ignore it. <laughs> I don't feel like he really has any. Yeah, idea. Judai is very, like idiot protagonist just here to play cards he's like that's all he's why. got he's like i'll just wait for the daytime and tell her how much i appreciate her like there's no reason for the f <laughs> to say it in a letter we can just appreciate each other as friends as much as we like <laughs> like i feel like that's the kind of energy that he has so i feel like his plan was never gonna work and only through show being an idiot and not realizing that the letter literally says judai at the end He's so into the idea of being with Asuka, which I don't blame him. She's a fantastic lady. I remember this episode when it aired, when I was a teenager watching this. For various reasons, it's always stuck with me, and I've always remembered this episode. <laughs> so, it's... Yeah. It ends up being they duel. I like Thunder Giant. I actually really like Thunder Giant. It's kind of a shame Thunder Giant is not a better card, because I really like Thunder Giant. Which is a Yeah, name. Thunder Giant sucks, but Thunder Giant is a cool card. Yeah, 100%. I do like it when uh, Kronos gets shocked, because at least he gets some payback for his actions, because let me tell you, he's done some bad stuff. It deserves to get yeah. shocked at that point. Yeah, the, he's not beating these allegations. Not a chance. Not 100%. No chance of him getting in there. But, it, yeah, there's also the introduction of uh, Asuka's side friends, who I like one of them. The one I think, as we've established before in our Tag Force video, I like the one with black hair. I don't appreciate the other one. <laughs> hate <laughs> oh, her right. every single time. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about that rivalry. Yeah, don't afraid. This continues. I appreciate the black hair one. I think she's got a head on her shoulder. The other one, I need her to shut up. <laughs> she needs to stop <laughs> whatever she's doing. <laughs> Not appreciative of it. So, and this is another game where Judai wins by top taking monster report. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it sure fucking does. <laughs> it's a, it's ace monster is monster report. <laughs> I do like that, like you said, he does fuse into a different monster, so it's not the same thing. But I do think it's funny that they are recognizing Monster Reborn's really fucking good. 
<laughs> if you didn't know this. Yeah, Monster Reborn sure is pretty fucking good. Yeah, which is why it was banned around this time. Because Monster Reborn was too good. <laughs> so it needed to be nerfed in a man... Not nerfed, they just couldn't use it, so... Yeah, episode three it was perfectly fine. Ever except for the really weird stuff, it there was a perfectly fine duel. Good introduction of, I guess. I even though I said he literally does the same thing he does against Manjomi, he at least shows. I like the 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 fallback of like, oh no, I can do this again because he does it to her the same way he does it to him. And at the end, he doesn't like say like, oh man, uh, I fucking smoked that. He kind of goes like, oh yeah, you had me. I got totally lucky on that one. <laughs> he doesn't go like at mm-hmm. no point is he like, oh yeah, greatest of all time. He's not me when I uh, top deck the card I need to master duel and say I'm actually the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh player of all time. I'm the goat. I've never no one ever has been this good at the game <laughs> when I top deck. He kind of actually takes the practical approach of like I could have easily have lost that, and I basically was losing that. I just got very lucky. So that's how I feel about the episode. How about you, Zen? Yeah, it's a a weird one. <laughs> it's okay. It's not my, my favorite. It's probably my least favorite of the ones that we watched today. But it's uh, it, it's there. It's definitely the most shonen of episodes where it's like, yes, yeah, this is what the kids like. This is what the little boys like, and they're like, yeah. If I was a kid, I remember as a kid liking it, so <laughs> they're right on that part. <laughs> But as an adult, it's a little bit more like, oh, man, this just doesn't make sense. It makes you just feel uncomfortable. <laughs> a little bit weirded out by it at points as well. But yeah, yeah, perfectly fine. 22 episode, 22 minute episode, perfectly fine. And if I was going to say if this was 22 episodes of just this plot, it would be unfortunate. But yes, it'd be very different. But there we go. That's episode three. How do you feel about episode four? Episode no, no, four is... Five part fusion V W X Y Z. Yes. So this is the other episode that like embraces the stupidity of the Yu Gi Oh universe because new cards are being delivered by the army, uh, with like attack helicopters and aircraft carriers and shit. Because of course they are. It's the most important thing in the whole world mm-hmm. is Yu Gi Oh cards. Um. And the shop gets new cards. But Jaden sleeps through that, or no, he's too late to the test, and then he falls asleep during the test, and then he uh, is late to getting cards because he fell asleep, and he's late to his test because he helped this sweet old lady push her truck that broke down, Um, and then it turns out the sweet old lady he helped is the manager of the card shop who saves a pack for him, and all the other packs got bought by Kronos, who gives the cards to Chaz, because he's going to set up Jaden and Chaz for a second duel. Uh, and they duel again, and Chaz uses the XYZ Dragon Cannon that Kaiba used, plus the VW, or the VX, or whatever the fuck, VW, I think it is, Tiger Jet, to combine them into VW, XYZ, uh, Tiger Catapult Dragon Cannon, or some shit. It, yeah, it's, it's an advanced thing. It's a really long name. The VW, XYZ um, Catapult Dragon. Yeah. And uh, he is beating Judai down, and Judai gets Wing Karibo again, and it's the first time that he gets Wing Karibo's evolved form, Wing Karibo level 10, which he is able to use because he pulled the card for it out of the pack that the old lady saved for him. Uh, and then he's, they're both, Chaz has 1,000 life points left and nothing left on the field, and Judai says, Hey, it's funny, we both have a thousand life points left, but it's my turn. Sure would be crazy if I drew a monster with a thousand attack points right now, and then he top decks Avion. The, and the, he the plays Avion being, and wins. V Manjume goes like, You can't do that. <laughs> and then he goes, I'm not saying I will. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be crazy? And then yeah. He loses to Avion and they have an animation of Chaz getting fucking rocked by Avion. Then I was like, damn. Yes really good animation of it, too. it like fades to black and it's like slow-mo of just him getting decked by avion it's pretty fucking yeah. good and as someone said in uh, when i posted the picture someone said chaz stocks down <laughs> <laughs> chaz stock is in an all-time low right now it's yes, true after that and i agreed because holy shit you cannot i've made fun of avion the second he showed up honestly avion is probably the worst card in jaded's deck <laughs> in judai's deck it's 
a 1,000 attack, 1,000 defense, actively useless, always gets murked every time it's shown up. Only thing it's good for is fusing into Flame Wingman and occasionally stomping one attack. He has never actually won yeah, anything he, with it. Uh, he will later. He does get a, a shine duel. There you go. But he's It's able filler, to... but he does get a shine. He gets the shine. He, and let me tell you, losing to this monster has to feel bad. So that was the basic entire episode. Also, no, it, the, the other thing that happens, my bad. Continue with the, explaining the episode before we get into it. Because there's a little bit more. Because this entire fight was predicated on that if Judai wins, he gets to go to Raw Yellow. Oh, yeah, so he gets promoted to Rye Yellow and Sho is in depression mode about it. And then Judai shows up back at the dorm. And he's like, nah, I think I'll just stay in Slifer Red. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? And that's, also, I think and that's the, pretty much where it is. Yep, I think the, him also staying is what finally gets Chumley off of that bed. Because he's been on the bed for the past... <laughs> three episodes yeah his his whole thing is that he's like hyper depressed because like slifer red is is terrible and they never he's are gonna like, get anywhere what's the point what's the point of dueling anymore he's like eeyore yeah he's like very he's eeyore dueling. yeah very eeyore Always um saying like hey maybe you should let him sleep sire show then he won't advance and then we get a chance <laughs> and he's like i can't do that and then he runs and he goes i have to do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah show kind of sucks he does um, and then he also trips he's like i have to do whatever yeah <laughs> he has like a comic <laughs> so first things first this entire duel i do like that beginning opening because it made me remind me of all that remember when the pandemic was in full swing as opposed to now where it's just in swing where people were going crazy <laughs> flying cards and yes. it, re it reminded me of that that actually reminded me you know, those times, like, actually, that's how Yu-Gi-Oh cards are bought nowadays. <laughs> Full-on army intervention. Oh, my God, everyone's going crazy. Give me that rare card. Um, I also like that when Kronos takes those cards, no one realizes who he is until he reveals himself. Even though he looks like... Even though he looks exactly like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, who is this mysterious character? Meanwhile, he's going, m m me your pizza pie. And he's like, what? You don't know it's him? <laughs> yeah, and everyone's like, who is that? <laughs> The guy who's gently singing up da 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 to himself. You don't know who the fuck that is. It's and then he pulls his mask off like it's a big reveal. He does. And then I think Manjimei just goes like, ah, oh, okay. Rare cards. I can win with this. Um, I would say at the beginning of the duel, there's two hints of cheating here. Judai cheats and I think also Manjume cheats. Because Manjume activates Magical Mallet. And he says that with Magical Mallet, he can return Magical Mallet back to the deck. You cannot do that with Magical Mallet. Yeah, you absolutely cannot do that with Magical Mallet. And, and he does could, it twice. He does. And if you could do that legitimately with Magical Mallet, that card would be banned. And we would never be able to play Actually, it. what he says also is um, he can put Magical... If he returns Magical Mallet, he can put it back into his hand, is what he says. Which is not true. No, it, it none of it makes sense. Uh, Wink Reba level 10's effect where he can destroy can only be activated in the battle phase and uh, Judai seems to be able to activate it unless the so here's the way that normal Yu-Gi-Oh would go is that you would not in fact say VWXYZ banish the card okay now attack what you say is I banish your response and then he would say I flip and I activate Wink Reba level 10 and then he would go okay I end my turn my turn, main phase one. Banish the Wing Kariba level 10. That's actually what would legitimately yes. happen. Yeah, so you, uh, Wing Kariba's effect can be activated outside of the battle phase. It, yes. It's not restricted to the battle phase. It's just when it's destroyed. But it's So technically, it's not Judai that cheated. It's Chaz that cheated, but he cheated himself. Yeah, By using VWXYZ's effect in the battle phase and then also conjoined with an attack. But it's, it, it's just done for the theatrics. Yeah, I know. Gotta look good for the camera. I, just, I had to say it. It just as someone who tried so hard to make Wing Kariba level ten work and never could as a kid, it actively bothered me how easy Jaded is always able to use Wing Kariba level ten. Yeah, well, because Wing Kariba level ten is impossible to fall for. Yes. Because 100%. it's it's literally impossible. Yep. One hundred. But uh, yeah, it it uh. It's a good duel. I like whenever uh, Deuce Chaz loses. I enjoy yeah, that. It's pretty good. 
I also have here as my notes, summoning VWXYZ uh, Dragon Catapult is like going super minus. Himanjume actively chose to lose two 2,000 monsters for one 3,000 monster. Uh -huh. He won that turn if he didn't activate that card. He, he actually had game because I think he didn't have that many life points left. But in his mind, he's like, no, I have to go for the big play. <laughs> I have to go for the 3,000 beat stick. But I was like, there, this, he goes five cards. I, this card can only be called Super Minus because the amount of resources to get a monster. And if you don't know this, this is the other part of the effect. When you use the fusion to summon the VWXYZ Catapult, you have to banish those cards. So he, in essence, lost five, seven cards. To do this one move and have a 3,000 that has no negate, has nothing, has no protection to say, and he loses to a Winker Evil level 10. Yeah, it's just a banish effect. That's literally all it has. It's, uh... Yeah, not great. Something well. else. Yep. So, yeah, I, I, I did like this duel. It was very fun, actually. I remember liking it back in the day, and seeing it now, actually, I did like the flow of it. Any of these tiny complaints are literally because I'm an asshole, and I just wanted to bring them up, <laughs> but it was actually very enjoyable <laughs> to watch. Yeah, it's a good duel. Uh, I like any time Chaz loses. I really like Wing Karibo, just in general. It's a really cute like mascot for the series. Mm -hmm. It's very fun to see him. I love Wing Karibo. Anytime he shows up, and he, anytime he starts yeah, talking he's, to Yeah, he's him. my favorite Karibo form controversial but i think i'd have to agree with you i, li I really like base karibo um but i think there's something special about karibo with wings <laughs> same yeah card something about wings. little angel karibo is is very cute a yeah. lot of the karibos are cute um like i think karibon is pretty cute too the one with just like the bow and the little tail for some mm -hmm. reason yeah perform a pal karibo who is a performer pal? Karibo. Yeah, doesn't, isn't there like a Karibo of like every one? Like there's a there's yeah. Junk Karibo, which is junk like Karibo. you say is Karibo. The X Y Z Karibo. Um, X Z is Karibo. Uh, I forget. Yeah, what Z it's is. like Utopia. You, hang on, I'm gonna find it. Gonna Link find this Karibo, of course. The Karibo. That's yeah, probably Link most Karibo, used. obviously. Uh, a Karibo magician, the one that is just Karibo cosplaying as Dark Magician, <laughs> which I love. Magic Karibo. Magic Karibo. It's so good. Very good. The Karibo from Detonate. <laughs> the card Detonate with the Karibo on it that looks like he's doing a full face through of something. Which is great. Uh, uh, there's Ankh Karibo, which is just Monster Reborn Karibo. Yeah. One moment. Karibo, Karibo is very cute. Basic end of it all. <laughs> Yeah, Karibo. Karibo is cute, and I like how Wing Karibo level ten has like a dragon head on his and like yeah. armor on for some fucking reason. Wing Karibo level nine is also very good. The one that has the red dragon on it. I don't know why there's multiple forms of this one Karibo and why he's leveling up. I think it's because there's level I mechanic also... is coming out eventually, but yeah, they use it later with Arm Dragon as well. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the Karibo support card that is like. Uh, What's it called? Berserker Crush, where it's just Wing Karibo punching. Yeah, it's that's so really good. fucking good. In general, the Karibo support and archetype is looking nice. I like all the cards featuring them on it. It's very cute. I've also always wondered who's the girl on Transcendent Wings. Because. I don't know. Yeah, this never gets revealed later on. It's a mystery. No. Pretty sure they don't. I don't even think he uses Wing Kriva level ten again. <laughs> I think he does like a couple more times, but he's not his main one because eventually he'll get Neos, and the the idea of actually using Wing Kriva for anything other than being safe for one turn. Because like I said, going into Wing Kriva level ten is not only impossible; it's super minus. It is like you yeah, because you have to discard two cards to do it. Two fucking cards, and you have like yeah, it's just impossible to summon the dude. <laughs> Even with crazy hand drawing, it'd be kind of impossible, but nah, that's fine. But yeah, that was uh, that's episode four. Perfectly good episode. And now we'll go into part uh, episode five and six, which are technically a two parter. They don't consider it a two parter, but six is literally like the end of five's duel. So we decided to put them together. <laughs> I didn't want to leave on a yeah. cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this is where we start getting into Asuka looking for her brother. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, there is this guy who his name is fuck. That's a hard Ty- name. Yeah, it's not fuck. It's but it's like a <laughs> stupid weird name. Um, is like not I don't really remember his name. Sh- not Shadow Hunter. He's like. He's like something. Hunter. I think it actually is something dumb like Shadow Hunter. He might be. Let me see. Yu Gi Oh! GX. Shadow. Shadow Rider? No. No. Shadow Riders are later. Uh, hmm. yeah. His English translated name is Titan. His name um, might be. Titan. I guess that is actually the I don't know. It's. Name. The point the point is that he he doesn't do anything. Uh, he is like claims to be able to use the shadow games, and he's in this abandoned dorm where students supposedly vanish. Um, Alexis leaves flowers there for her brother because she thinks he's dead or like missing or whatever, and she gets snagged by this guy and. Uh, they go to save her, and he starts dueling this dude. And he uses Archfiend monsters, which is super cool, like, archetype rep that I didn't expect to see. Well, I did, obviously, because I've seen it a million times, but that I didn't expect to see when I watched the show when I was little, because I'm pretty it, sure they predate this episode. I actually think they are... Yeah, they predate it by a lot. Archfiends were used back in, like, the fucking Before the Chaos era. They're like mm-hmm. way old cards. Super hard to use too, by the way. <laughs> because they yes. you inflict life points onto yourself, so kind of makes sense later on why he, you might get the wrong impression that the Archfiends are good. <laughs> they're not, <laughs> unfortunately. They're terrible. Yeah, they're god awful. Uh, but yeah, it was cool to, to see them used here because I was like, wow, I remember those cards. That's yeah. weird. And yeah, Chumley is actually in this episode for fucking reasons. Yeah, he's he's, <laughs> he's found his motivation. Now that he's seen a man who's reached the top of the pinnacle and chose to say, he's like, maybe there's something in life. This is the backstory I've decided to give the Chumley. Because I realized it was super weird that all of a sudden he went from, damn, don't want to get up today, to suddenly like, I'm actually up and about and actually super friendly with you. And I want to say it's specifically that moment where he says, I'm going to stay, is that he decides that he no longer wishes to be. <laughs> asleep all the time and depressed yeah dueling saved his depression is what i'm saying is that he was depressed and then dueling saved his life <laughs> so it goes uh continue and uh yeah it, it's pretty much just like oh no oscar's missing oh no she got kidnapped we're gonna save her and then it's like half of a duel and then the the second half of the next episode is the entire remainder of the duel I will say his opening hand uh, against Titan is Avion, two mirror forces, emergency provisions, mirror gate, and hero signal. That and is... I think this is the first time that he busts out the uh, Mirage of Nightmare combo. He does. He does that in the episode um, six. He's, that's what saves yeah. his ass. Also, fun fact, the second Mirror Force is a fuck-up. It is. I realized, I was like, where the fuck was this second mm-hmm. Mirror Force? Yeah. It, it it was supposed to be Mirage of Nightmare, but they put a Mirror Force in twice. Nice. Because <laughs> I was wondering, where the fuck did Mirage of Nightmare come from? I knew where your yeah, they, was. For some reason, they pretty much never let a Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist have more than one copy of any card that they're using. Yeah. Except polymerization, that they let Jaden have more than he, one of those. He has to. But have yeah, it. you're. Yeah, you're never gonna see a Yu-Gi-Oh Pro tag top deck like two uh, double mirror force. Imagine what a Judai's opening hand is actually a Maxi, an Ash Blossom, <laughs> a Red <Regeki. laughs> Yeah, Red Harpy's Feather Duster, Harpy's and Feather fucking Duster. like, um, Fusion Destiny. Yeah, to everything drop he needs. The drop DP yeah. turn one. Wins every single game. <laughs> every every duel lasts two minutes. He does the same combo every single time. It'd be sick. Uh, continue what you were saying. So in episode six, he starts playing. He uses the Mirage of Nightmares yes. combo. 
Yeah, he, he busts out the famous Mirage of Nightmare combo where you use Mirage of Nightmare and then you emergency provisions it to heal yourself and then you don't have to do the drawback of it anymore. Um, which, fun fact, not the first time this is used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, but it is in really? GX the first time. Yes, no, uh, no, Grandpa no. Yugi. Yugi's grandpa uses it. Fuck, Yugi's grandpa's fucking a meta? <laughs> he was a meta heavy guy? Yeah. He uh he uses it. He's wearing like a mask and he's dueling Joey to get his like motivation back or something. I don't remember why he's dueling Joey. Uh he's dueling Joey for some reason. And somehow nobody knows it's him because in Yu-Gi-Oh rules, if you cover your face, no one can possibly recognize you. Yep. Um and he's wearing a mask. Yeah, and he busts out that combo on Joey. It's the first time it's used in the anime. Does he scoop? Because he's like, well, no, you have too much card advantage. Now. How the fuck am I going to win this? <laughs> nope. No, he doesn't scoop. He just uh, plays it out, and he wins. But uh, that's unrealistic. Yeah, Jaden uses this a lot. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's... Judah uses this a lot. But uh, yeah, it's the second half of his duel against the evil Shadow Man, and it it starts like actual shadow shit starts happening because it's like a real shadow game because he gets like possessed by I guess just like a shadow. Mo- I don't think it's actually shown what possesses him. So, it's just like a yeah, the shadow darkness. monster. Yeah. Yeah, just just, just darkness. general darkness. Yeah, um, and then it's like an actual shadow game now because he got possessed by evil magic, so the magic becomes actually real. Um, Judai does manage to win, and they do bust out Alexis and get away. Um, and then Kronos is like trying to find out what's going on because I'm pretty sure that Kronos got this guy to go after Jaden. That's he what did. it is, right? He hired him in the beginning. Yeah. It was like a bounty hunter. Yeah. yeah. He was like, I'm tired of Jayden. trying to expel this guy. I'm going to just, you know, this kid's just going to disappear. He's moved on. He's going to die. He's yeah. just going to die. It's, no one... it's time for him to die. Hey, yeah. nobody's going to look for the body. <laughs> That's what he says to himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget about it. <laughs> Never mind. Be sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> He's sleeping with the bitch. He's so good. <laughs> Kronos, where did the kid go? The parents are asking. Oh, ask him. He said they want a giant plate of spaghetti. <laughs> he pulls out a giant plate of spaghetti. <laughs> da, 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 he, just, he just runs away like uh, Mario. Just going, woohoo! He jumps out. <laughs> <laughs> he goes down a big pipe. <laughs> he just yes, so... <laughs> <laughs> tell you flag in the background as he runs around uh, 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 uh. oh god that's, that's kind of how he's treated but yeah he picks up the receipt basically all the crime anything that would have led it back to that he hired him he basically uh, picks it up and goes like oh well <laughs> maybe next yeah time. he like there's no explanation about it and he's just like well I never paid them anyway. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Goes away. Also, Judah has no idea that he basically just condemned a man to death. <laughs> yeah, he has no idea that he almost died. Because he realizes that it's a trick in episode six, and he's able to break the illusion by tossing Avion directly into the Millennium Puzzle. Uh, which is what this guy is wearing, which is maybe the yes. second... Con- continuing the trend of Yu-Gi-Oh cards being really good projectile yeah. weapons. And let me tell you, Avion's fucking amazing as, an, as a projectile, because he destroys the puzzle in one go. <laughs> yeah, but he, he throws it at like a solid piece of... I guess it would be like plastic if it's fake, but it yeah. like shatters it. Right in the middle. It's powerful as hell. And that's when he gives a line of like... Because uh, he's basically trying to say like... Come on, because he's basically saying that he has the powers of the millennia of items. And he says, like, oh, you have the seven millennium items? He's like, how many millennium items are there? He's like, seven, and I wield all seven millennium puzzles. He's like, ha, huh, there aren't seven millennium puzzles. There's actually various. Like, he, they learned that in class, and that's the way to show you, ha, huh, he's learning, I guess. <laughs> and he's doing all... He doesn't even learn it in class. He learns it in the building themselves and when they show all the different millennium items. Uh, but I uh-huh. like it because the second his, his, the jig is up, he's like, well... You're not going to lose now that you're not afraid of the illusion. He smoke bombs by throwing the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm caught. And he smoke bombs. And then that's what activates the shadow game. 
I love that this dude was like, I am the great, powerful pharaoh. He's like, actually, it's a trick. God damn it again. And he throws the smoke bomb. <laughs> damn kid not believing in my bamboozlement. <laughs> Out of here. Yeah, there's a lot of shit like that. And yeah, this is the first time that we see the shadows. It's not the last time. No. They will continue, but it's the first time we see the shadow games in GX. Yeah, and in Japanese they call them the dark games because I guess the censorship yep. of dark games is shadow games. Um, and these are also the ones where they they don't go get sent to the shadow realm to just fucking die. <laughs> That's the main difference. Yeah, there is no shadow realm. Remember in the Japanese version. In the Japanese version, if you lose a shadow game, you just die. Yeah, which is funny because in the manga, that's not 100% what happens. You get hit with the punishment game, uh, which is what happens to, if you don't know this, which is really funny if you don't know, in the manga version, uh, Yugi's grandpa isn't killed or his soul isn't stolen. He's put into a uh, video recording. He's put into like a, a tape of some kind and his soul lives inside the tape and he Yugi just carries it around with him <laughs> and that's his grandpa's yep. It's probably one of the yeah, silliest the, things. I think part of the reason that the Shadow Realm just being you get killed now is because um, later enemies that used that in Yu-Gi-Oh, that was just what their punishments always ended up being. Like Yami Marek sent people to the Shadow Realm, quote-unquote, a lot because um, he won a lot of games. And the, mm -hmm. the end result of those were always just like, you fucking die because he was like a crazy murderer. <laughs> but uh, Yugi's was never you die it was always like you have a horribly traumatic experience that makes you a better person because you don't in, want to get killed in theory <laughs> like in I think theory in, better. yeah well like uh, when he did it to kaiba in the anime i think there was just like he now must pick to rebuild the puzzle of his heart but yes, uh do you know what the like punishment in a, was in the manga version he like basically put him in a coma didn't he uh, well, yes, but do you know what he did to him that put him in that coma? Was it the Mind Crush? I don't remember specifically. I just it was, but what the Mind Crush does in the manga is it puts Kaiba in a world with all of his Duel Monsters cards, and they just kill him over and over again. Yeah, that would explain why he's the way he is then. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. so, so, that, that actually explains a lot about the weird murderous intent of Kaiba. He also does not get fixed by that. <laughs> it takes him a while to no. get a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like the first instance of when he's in the coma and he stands up. And he goes like, oh, shit, he's standing. I forget what they're doing specifically. I think they're playing the Blue Eyes, and that's what gets him to finally stand up and be like, I'm Blue Eyes. Where the fuck is Mokuba? <laughs> Immediately wakes up angry. Um, So, yeah, these two episodes, just to go into the other ones here. Um, I do like that Kronos in five episodes in has realized I'm never going to be out able to uh, expel this kid. I think it's time to move on to murder or disappearance, whichever mm -hmm. happens first. Yeah, um, because he just decided that decided Jedi he has, to. has to go away. Yeah, I like there's a uh, a uh, gag with the Dark Duelist where he says, "I never show my back to anyone," and he floats away from Kronos, and Kronos goes, "Huh, he really doesn't show his back to anyone." Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Uh, the 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 opening hand play with Mirage of Nightmares was really good because it was like it felt nice to see a band play. If you don't know this, Mirage of Nightmares is banned specifically because of this play that he does here. Uh, chances are it would be only better if they returned it. So Mirage of Nightmares has stayed banned and will stay banned, even though they could just errata mm -hmm. it to make it better. I think actually people would still play it if it had the errata. Because you could draw four hand traps and then you're good. And then you could just discard them on your turn. So maybe there's nothing you can do to Mirage and Nightmares to stop it from being banned. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Mirage and Nightmares is really good. Yeah, it is really good. Um, so it was kind of I was kind of nice to see it back there. And I like that they never explained it. Because I was like, oh yeah, for the actual good plays, they're not going to tell the kids how to do it. Because they're like, oh, well, first of all, this is a banned play. So we don't really want them to know that you could do this. <laughs> so, uh, But he's just going to very quickly do it and everything's going to be okay. Uh, I like that the Dark Duelist is using the uh, Terror King Archfiend. Not Terror King, the Archfiends in general, because the Archfiends are the um, are the Summon Skull archetype, which are, are, are all under Summon Skull, and Summon Skull is the first, um, I guess, boss monster of Yugi in the manga. It's the 
it was basically his Dark Magician before Dark Magician. So this guy kind of having the Millennium item and actually using a card that was once Yugi's or... Because um, he does also play Summon Skull eventually. I thought it was actually kind of a nice callback to say like... Because a nice callback to say like, oh yeah, he's kind of like him, but he's clearly not. Because Yugi never used the Archfiends. He just used Summon Skull and that's it. But I like that kind of attention to detail. I loved it when he tossed Avion when he realized it was all fake. <laughs> Because it was really funny, <laughs> and it's the most it's the most use Avion can ever get for him. Um, <laughs> I, I love when Wing Karibos like comes out to save him from the Dark Shadow games, and all those shadows are fucking terrified of Wing Karibo. <laughs> and they back off. Um, when Spark Blaster, when Sparkman eventually comes out and he has the Spark Blaster, you get to see the Japanese version. So in America, it's pink. Um, because you can't sell um, something related to kids that's actually a real-ass gun. But in Japan, you can. So in the Japanese version of the Spark Blaster is just a real-ass gun. <laughs> and it mm-hmm. looks terrifying. Yeah, it's just literally a blaster. A huge blaster. Um, I like when we get to see Blade Edge, and his name is Edgeman. Yep. That's pretty good, because he says, Edgeman! And it's very clearly they're saying the translation is Blade Edge. I also yeah. like it for... And this is, I think this is the first time he does the uh, Hero Emerges Blade Edge combo, right? Yes, he does. Yeah. The... Yeah. You'll see that combo every, like, fucking other duel from now on from him. <laughs> yep. Because it's the only way to get out Blade Edge, because no other fucking elemental <laughs> hero is lasting a turn. <laughs> yeah, you ain't tributing two monsters in an elemental hero deck. No, when, you're, when your greatest a monster card is fucking Clayman, because he has 2,000 defense. <laughs> like, they couldn't even give Sparkman yeah. 1,800 attack. Come on. <laughs> yeah, every other reg- like base elemental hero fucking sucks, except, like, in unique cases, Bubble Man can be useful. Yep. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, I also like that apparently Terra King Archfiend's Japanese name is the Genocide King Damon. Which is a fan fantastic name. Because <laughs> that's what they call him. They go, Genocide King Diamond. I sound like Arnold and not like a Japanese man, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, enough. did not sound like a Japanese person, but... It's trying to be the tough in, the tough one here, but it's fine. I really like that they kept saying Genocide, and I was like, oh yeah, they had to censor that name. <laughs> there was no way. Hell Soldier, I think you could technically do, and not too many people would get too offended by it, but there's no way you could release a card called the Genocide King. I don't know, because uh, Hell Soldier was back in that era of Yu-Gi-Oh! where, like parents were super worried about it and upper deck and i think it was still upper deck at that was it still upper deck at that point yeah i think so when did konami take over i don't remember it had to be fairly early on once i realized uh Yu-Gi-Oh was a hit (laughs) at some point they had to take back control of it yeah i know eventually they they took it from upper deck um But I don't know. But yeah, I think at the time, like, a reference to hell would have made Pearl Clutching Parents very nervous. Yeah, fair enough. And to be fair, there was a card in original LOB called Trials of Hell, and they had to change it. Mm hmm. So, yeah. Still, Genocide King, fantastic name for a card. <laughs> and also, for how strong the card is, which is not very, <laughs> it's maybe a little bit too far. Because I don't think he's even the best. I guess, he- no, he's not even the best uh, Archfiend. Because that would go to Summon Skull. He's the best one. Because he's Summon Skull. I really like every. I like you. I was kind of nostalgic to see the Archfiends. Because it did also remind me that Axe of Despair is a uh, Archfiend card. That, uh, <laughs> because if you don't know this, in over here on our side, they had no idea that they would eventually make archetypes out of certain cards. So... When Axe of Despair got released, it had the similar name to Summon Skull, um, but they changed the name completely, so it had no relation to Summon Skull. And then when the Archfiend archetype came out, and both Summon Skull and Axe of Despair were in that uh, archetype, they had to retroactively go into every single Archfiend card and say, also Summon Skull and Axe of Despair are counting. (laughs) Yep. There's like, yeah, it counts now. Yeah, <clears throat> which bloom, which was like super weird to me back in the day of like why it, yeah. did Southern Skull get like retroactively stuffed into here? Yep, and it made those, especially Axe of Despair. It's not until you see the original art for Axe of Despair 
<laughs> do you realize like, oh, okay, yes, it's an Archfiend card. Because otherwise it just looks like a axe. There's nothing special about it. Yeah, because the original art is like a face on yeah. the axe. Yeah, it's like screaming at you. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's terrifying. Okay, that's an Archfiend card. Good enough. <laughs> So yeah, that was the first six episodes of GX, and I'll say five and six were an enjoyable duel. Again, there was parts of it that I thought were really, really, I really liked, and there was some fun, silly bits, so perfectly good. I think out of all these episodes, all pretty good, strong first five episodes, ex- with the only one being a little bit like, eh, is episode three. <laughs> with its Yeah, episode three weirdness. is a bit funky, but uh, the other ones are good. It, it kind of sets up the the world we're we're just now sort of leaning into like a larger plot like with the uh, Asuka's brother and s- the shadow games are here now mm-hmm. um we'll still kind of be messing around for a while um the actual plot for season 1 doesn't kick in until later on but it, they will poke at it here and there yeah and we will keep poking at Yu-Gi-Oh! GX because next we have episodes... Oh, by the way, the name of those episodes were Dark Fiend Deck and Wing Karibo's Miracle. So, They're not too exciting, but I figure I may as well mention them because I mentioned the other ones. Next week, we should be doing episodes 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 because 11 is actually a two-parter. 10 and 11 are a part 1 and part 2, so we'll just do those. Man, they love that's... doing that right at the end of our normal... Yeah, they do. Normal I think it, places. I think it will like normalize after this, and after that one, we'll only have to do four. But for now, we're going to be doing five for the next one and talk about them. Early impressions on uh, GX is pretty fun. I like the concept of GX. and kind of interested to see where it goes from here. I really like the fact that uh, I, I it's 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 interesting to me that no other person except for maybe you, is into the idea of just, like, slice of life Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> because I thought Yeah, was... I, I don't really know why people don't like the idea of slice of life Yu-Gi-Oh! as if it's not, like, a fucking card game. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of them kind of leaning into it and being like, oh yeah, this is a card game that people just like and play, and sure, this is a weird world where the entire economy is focused around dueling and... <laughs> all this other stuff and kids go to this school specifically to learn and parents will gladly send their children off to a school, which a man who lost to a child in card games, he's so angry about it that he makes all the slifer reds basically live in poverty for no other reason than he's fucking molding years later. Yeah. Kaiba is on like the most intense hater shit. 100%. He's so tilted about losing to Yugi that he's like, torturing children over it and he can't even explain to everyone that because technically he lost to a tem not yugi but he should also be angry at yugi because yugi is the one who made a tem go away and he's like damn it that asshole that <laughs> third rate duelist who's not good enough to lick my boot how dare you yeah be he's the like one? i can never i can never get it back never so i like that part of like this world that it's the the eventual world that kaiba has been building towards one kaiba's been building towards two things one amusement parks that orphans can go for free and two an entire world dedicated to dual monsters Mm -hmm. so the two he has two things in his itinerary (laughs) and that is i need to make sure these orphans are having a bitching time at my amusement parks and i need to make sure that the only thing people care about is dual monsters he's doing yeah, great it's, uh he gets some cool moments in gx you'll there's one that i'm comfortable telling you about because it's so far in the future you'll forget that i told you yeah likely but uh there's one point where like the the world's being lost to like darkness or whatever and uh, uh there's like a list of duelists left that need to be defeated by darkness or, and stuff and like people's names keep dropping off the list over time as like finally losing and uh, the only one whose name never falls off the list is Seto Kaiba. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so he's like constantly just winning against every evil assassin that shows up. Great. That's some great. That's some great attention to detail, right there. That means that Joey also eventually loses. Yeah. <laughs> Joey gets name dropped. He does not appear, but he does get name dropped at one point. Um, yeah, I would imagine so. He, he, you know, as much as, uh, it's fun to just say, ha ha, Joey, he, well, he is technically one of the best duelists in the world. He just so happens to be the friend of Yugi, so no one... Pegasus, <laughs> really... uh, names him as the third best duelist he's ever seen. Really? 
Because Pegasus, oh yeah, Pegasus is in this because this takes place in the anime continuity in which he does not die. Yeah, because in the manga, in the he, manga gets he gets killed by Bakura. He does, which I think is a good thing that the anime does because there was no reason to kill. Pegasus is like one of the greatest villains I think out there. It's yeah, really Pegasus weird. Pegasus is great. Him. He's it's a good weird. character. Yeah, he gets fucking yeah. murdered in the manga by Bakura, but in the anime they keep him around, and so he does appear multiple times in GX. Yeah, yeah. So fun talking about it. Can't wait to talk about it with you again. I guess Friday for us, but they won't hear about us again till Tuesday. So thank you very much for watching the, what was basically a super lengthy episode for this one. But because it is Yu Gi Oh, we both love Yu Gi Oh. There's only so this first episode had to be long. Yeah, this we had to just kind of talk about Yu Gi Oh for a while. Yeah. So. They probably we'll see how it is next week if it will be this length again. I'll be kind of curious to see if it is because <laughs> I think we can uh, probably the basic... not because no. GX summaries are mostly like this duel happens now <laughs> and like yeah. you don't want to go through turn by turn of a of a duel you know. No. Funny enough, if you go to the wiki, you can't see a turn by turn of it. So it should be the my, the next one's following should be much shorter unless yeah unless we decide to go off tangent in some kind of way which we usually do but. You'll see it coming if it happens. <laughs> but Oh, okay. Something I didn't point out in episode two that I want to before we stop. Okay. Is there's a trend in GX especially where uh, triggering an opponent's like trap card is immediately treated as like you're the biggest idiot in the world. Like remember when uh, Judai gets hit with Jethonian Polymer? Yes. And Chaz is like, I knew it. In your ignorance, you'd get hit by my trap. But it's like he does, he met you an hour ago. He doesn't know anything about the cards that you're playing, or that like, what's he gonna do? Like, not play cards? <laughs> he still has yeah. to do it. Um, and the next episode we're gonna watch, there's a show duel, and show does like the objectively correct thing, but he gets hit by a trap, and immediately every character is like, "God damn it, that kid fucking sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh." <laughs> it's really funny. Funny enough, now that you mention it, she does the when he declares an attack on Oscar, she activates her trap. He's like, "Doesn't he care about my face down?" Like she actually is uh, like affronted about like, "Why is he attacking? I have a trap. <laughs> that means don't do it." Yeah, which like you gotta though. Like, what is Jaden gonna not attack at all until he draws Mystical Space Typhoon? Like, yeah, I play. You gotta <laughs> play. I draw and pass. I draw and pass. <laughs> Which is funny, too, because in the original, um, Yugi brings that up, and he's like, you can't not do anything. Like, sometimes you just have to trigger a trap, and then it's gone. Yeah, but, like, right. in GX, anytime there's a face down, if someone does anything, they're like, oh my god, I can't believe he took his turn while that face down is on the field. Idiot. Absolute fool. Absolute buffoon. I have to keep pay attention to that because yeah, I do. Now that you mention it, yeah, they do kind of react kind of harshly about it. Like, I, I would have also said to the Majun, like, how the fuck was I supposed to know that you were gonna play a card that perfectly counters me? Like, there's literally which you said this? that you only put in your deck anyway to counter me. He says yeah. it right after that. Like, I studied your duel, and so I put in this trap. And Why would have, he know that? And you only have like what one in the deck. And you drew one on your first turn. Come on, what the fuck mm -hmm. were the chances of that happening? Yeah, and like was he like? It wasn't even like, oh, you walked into a mirror force, dumbass. It was like he just took his turn. Yeah. Who plays an anti fusion trap card? No one. Not even in modern day, they don't use them. No, <laughs> they don't. Why would he expect that? It's you know, so fucking been, funny to me. Yeah, it was only only extra that is like to take the wingman. Otherwise, you could just use a Sakretsu. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or any, yeah, any much better trap. Yeah, but they always use the most like specific trap. Like Alexa's like, oh man, he's not gonna care about my trap. I activate my trap. It turns it into a direct attack on me. <laughs> it's like what? That you know what have been way better? Secrets more. <laughs> Literally anything. Or that yeah, dimensional prison or anything that's just an anything. Magical cylinder. Yeah. Anything. Mm -hmm. So. <sighs> but yeah that's it for the episode everyone thank you very much for watching we will see you guys next show in an archive until next time everyone you guys have a good day
That by we See need you to later. figure out a pass. We need to figure out an ending for this. Thank God for the music to play us off once again. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. God bless everyone. Get on the deck. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>